small businesses are more optimistic. That's probably a good thing. It's another hint. There's another hint that the full self-driving might be closer than we think. There was a big sell-off of the Magnificent Seven yesterday, and it seems to be continuing sort of this morning. Um, and I'm wondering, does that put too much power in the hands of the indexes? And maybe I'm just a little late to the party. This is Randy Kirk. If you like the morning news uh, that I present each day, please hit the like, or you could wait till the end and decide whether you like today's version. Um, and then hit uh, notify. Uh, you have to hit subscribe in order to hit notify. We've got a couple of great programs coming up later today. Uh, one of those will have Larry Goldberg again. I'll get uh, Brian White tomorrow. So if you want to be notified of those, please hit the notify. Um, and of course, uh, uh, joining uh, the uh, Patreon is always a good thing because I am starting to do some uh, new information on Patreon that isn't anywhere else. All right. Um, I'm pretty sure that 100% of you, like me, um, didn't know what was taking place yesterday morning. You may, If you were here with me yesterday morning, you know that I'm like, what in the world is going on? The Dow is up 200, the NASDAQ's down 100, and I'm looking down my 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 picks, you know, the the items that I have on my watch list, and here's Apple and Google, and, you know, you go down the list of the Magnificent Seven, they're all down pretty sharply, including Tesla, and I'm like, why are they all down, and the, the NASDAQ is down, and the, I mean, what in the world? Well, I, I couldn't make any sense of it, and then Later in the morning, uh, a guy on Twitter, you may be aware of him if you watch, watch Twitter a lot, Ross Gerber, he's a, he's a, he has an investment fund that he manages, and he's, so he's one of the smart guys. And, and he says, oh, by the way, here's an article. The NASDAQ has rebalanced. And I'm like, what do you mean the NASDAQ has rebalanced? Well, they, the NASDAQ decided that the Magnificent Seven, uh, they were out of balance with the rest of their index. In other words, the first half of the year, almost all of the increase in the S&P and almost all the increase in the NASDAQ were that magnificent seven and everybody else was down or flat or whatever, and only these seven were moving. And so this created this imbalance. I, I'm reminded of Kathy Wood, you know, where Kathy says, I'm only going to hold 10% of Tesla. And so if it gets to 14%, I got to sell. It doesn't matter if I think the stock's going to keep going up or not, I'm going to sell. Well, in kind of a similar way, the Nasdaq said, look, we need to rebalance our index. Now they just own this index. They're not a government agency. They're not, you know, part of uh, some organization that is, you know, uh, elected by us. No, they're a, they're a business. The NASDAQ is a business where people trade stock and they have this index and the index says, uh, we think we have to rebalance these things. Well, what does that do? <laughs> well, gosh, it basically said all of these funds that use the NASDAQ as the way that they sort, buy and sell, arrange their own index, their own funding, they have to now change what they're doing. Now, the NASDAQ's not forcing them because these funds are independent businesses, but the funds are telling their customers when these customers come in and buy from in their fund, they're saying, we're going to exactly match the NASDAQ index, or we're going to exactly match the S&P index. So when the NASDAQ rebalances, all of those funds have to rebalance. They have no choice. Now, I don't know whether they have to do it within a day or within two days or five days. I'm not deep enough into the subject to be able to tell you that. But yesterday, basically, the NASDAQ said to these funds, oh, we don't care. We have to rebalance our thing. You're going to have to rebalance yours. And massive enough amounts of money were lost by stockholders. Massive amounts of people that were holding the Magnificent Seven lost money yesterday and didn't know why. That was kind of the scary part of the whole thing. Didn't know why. Well, can you imagine if it was announced in advance? Oh my gosh. So they can't announce it in advance. So uh, everybody's sitting there going, why is my stock going down today? Do I need to bail right now because there's something I don't know? Something's happening to Apple or something's happening to Tesla. Something's happening to Google that I'm not aware of. What in the world is going on? So that was kind of a scary deal. Seems like that gives the NASDAQ index and the S&P index and the Dow, all of them, a huge amount of power. And you know what? Maybe this has been going on for a long time. I mean, when you put a new fund, when you put a new stock in, like when Tesla joined NASDAQ or when Tesla joined the S&P, obviously other stocks became less on the index the same day that that happened. And so they would have to be, have been sold off by these 
funds at the same time. So this is not actually new. I've just never heard of this rebalancing before. Or maybe it happened before and it just wasn't so impactful. But with just seven uh, stocks making a massive difference yesterday. Anyway, uh, uh, again, maybe I'm late to the party. Tell me in the comments below. Hey, Randy, where have you been? <laughs> so <laughs> yesterday, if you lost money, if you sold your Apple uh, at the at the bottom of the, or you sold your Tesla, anyway, uh, maybe you use this as an opportunity. You bought Tesla. I know a couple of people commented yesterday. They did. We did a program on this yesterday afternoon. Larry and I went into a little more detail on it. And uh, there were some people that commented that they took advantage of the opportunity and bought more Tesla at the bottom. Anyway, I think that uh, rebalancing is still taking a little bit of effect this morning because at the opening, you still saw the Magnificent 7 down as the NASDAQ and the uh, Dow were both up. Uh, and even the last time I looked, and we'll look again in a minute, but the last time I looked, uh, while Tesla and uh, Apple and Google and such were all now up, actually in the green, they were not in the green very much compared to the amount that the NASDAQ was up. So anyway, we'll see what happens with all that. Uh, turns out that consumers are borrowing more, but at a lower rate. Uh, that should make the Fed happy. The Bloomberg Econa Day consensus was for credit uh, to rise by 20 billion, but it only rose by 7.3 billion. So, uh, and then the Fed revised May credit from 23 to 20. So that's a pretty significant, that's overall like almost not a raise at all in terms of the amount that consumers are borrowing. So that would be a, a good thing for the Fed. Um, Tesla gave us a hint about FSD that uh, I don't think anybody else is picking up on. Uh, this was reported last week, and at the time, I didn't pick up on it. Um, so it turns out that Tesla's hired a bunch of drivers this summer. They've hired them some part-time and some full-time just to drive around. I'm sure they're giving them exact instructions on where they want them to drive and what, the, what they want them to do. But all of this is designed to give them more data on FSD. But obviously, it's data kind of like the Gary, the um, uh, Chuck Cook uh, left turn, you know, where I'm sure they're sending them out into unique situations and problem situations and having them redrive and redrive over and over again to get specific kinds of data they can feed into the machine that somehow isn't being solved with simulations. So I'm not exactly sure when that's necessary or why, but here's the key to this that I didn't think of last week. I thought of it this morning when I was going through this again, and I was actually listening to Stephen Mark Ryan did a very good video this morning about where we are at FSD uh, based on a video that uh, one of the Tesla guys put out uh, uh, last, one of the Tesla employees put out last week. Uh, you might wanna watch that video if you really wanna get in the weeds, but here's the key. The key was why three months? Why did they hire them for three months? Okay, why not six months? Why not indefinitely? Why, okay, what would be the obvious reason? I, there may be other reasons, but the obvious reason would be they have X number of specific cases that they need to have de be dealt with. They put that into their computer or into their, into their timelines, and they said, this is how much time we need drivers to be out there on the road to, in order to solve these issues that we have. And we don't need them for four months. We don't need them for six months. We don't need them indefinitely. We need them for this ex exact amount of time to take care of, I'm guessing, edge cases. Wouldn't that be what you would be guessing? Okay, I'm totally speculating. But if you've got a comment below that tells me another reason why they would just do it for three months, I'd love to hear from you. Um, okay, listen, I mentioned to you earlier that uh, small businesses are more optimistic. It was actually a little better raised than was expected. Actually, they're, as, as one uh, headline put it, they're actually less pessimistic because they're still way under the average, which is 98, and they're down around 91. Um, but uh, it's better than 89, you know, last month. And the pessimism uh, continues to be about around not being able to find enough labor. So once again, this is why I cannot move my thinking to recession is because if small businesses are still unable to find enough labor and it's the number one thing on their mind, uh, then that uh, tells me that you can't have a recession. So anyway, uh, that uh, uh, is also gonna come up in another second. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 leave it till then. Okay. So small business is a little uh, a little bit more optimistic. They don't think that they can raise their prices. This is another one of their pessimisms. 
only about 30% somewhere, I forget the exact number right now, but it's in that in that range, believe that they will be increasing their prices in the, in the near term. And they would like to, they need to, uh, because their labor prices are higher, some of their other costs are higher. And of course, they are probably paying more from their wholesalers, but they don't feel they can pass those prices along. That should be good news to the Fed. <laughs> so anyway, those are that's from the small business world. Um, the 10 year bonds are off this morning. Oh, let me give you one more from uh, Tesla. Uh, there was a sighting of a Tesla van this morning or yesterday. Anyway, that's uh, making the rounds. Uh, you know, you can probably find the picture if you care. Uh, but of course, we all expect a Tesla van to be coming, but getting a sighting of the actual van, um, you know, that should be good news. All right. Now, 10 bo 10 year bonds are off this morning, falling back under 4%. I'm kind of surprised that they're falling back under 4%, but that would be a signal that folks that are buying 10 year bonds think that in interest rates are going down um, and uh, that uh, that the inflation, therefore, inflation is going down. This is basically. If the uh, people are buying into, they're buying more 10-year bonds, trying to grab onto that 4%. That's what's really taking place. At the meantime, they're selling off on the two-year and the two-month, which means the those interest rates are going up. Those, the, the, that, So um, that would indicate that in the short term, uh, people think that these are not good deals, and that's why they're selling those bonds. So um, that, you know, fits with what we're th thinking is taking place is that the Fed uh, will raise uh, in a couple of weeks, in uh, two weeks, uh, but that that may be it. And that maybe later this year, they'll start to reduce or maybe in early 2024. Oil continues up. Okay. And this is what I was going to say a little bit, a few minutes ago. Oil continues up. And yes, the, the Saudis and the Russians and others have been lowering the amount of oil in the system. Um, you know, of course, that the Western nations could be increasing in order to make that up, but maybe they're not, or maybe they can't, maybe they are at max. Um, but um, the fact that oil is continuing up, whatever the reasons are, it, oil is the number one thing that affects future inflation. It's throughout the economy. I have this nervousness in the pit of my stomach that we're going to get down here around two and a half, three percent inflation, um, and we might bounce. All right. It's a nervousness in the pit of my stomach. And it, it has to do with the fact that what we're dealing with now has been all this up and down from what happened with COVID and the supply chains and all the nonsense that took place with regard to shutdowns and everything else. And we're getting through that now. And now the market has to figure out where are we in terms of reality? How much inflation are companies expecting? How much are consumers expecting? How much of inflation has to continue to happen because there are long-term imbalances. This would be the biggest thing. Long-term imbalances between supply and imbalances between supply and demand and long-term imbalances in terms of how much money there is in the market being put there by the government and by the Fed. So Fed, of course, reducing the money supply very dramatically, but the money supply is nowhere near what it was pre-pandemic. So, um, yeah, we might need a little more pain. I don't know. I, I'd be the last guy. You know me. I'd be the last guy to ask for a recession. Uh, but it is starting to concern me that underlying normal inflation that would be taking place, at, even without all of the rest of the uh, COVID-related uh, interruptions, uh, we might still actually have an underlying inflation issue. All right. Just a, just a thought. We need to look at it more. Need to look at it, at it over more months. But that's my point. Truflation also has leveled off. That's another part of my long-term angst. So for like two weeks, three weeks now, I think almost three weeks, truflation has been level at around two and a half percent. So that's another reason why I'm reporting this to you, something to put in into your knowledge bank. Maybe you can comment below whether you're thinking this way too, or whether you're thinking I'm totally off base on this one. All right, let's take a look at where things are right now very quickly here. The NASDAQ is back down again with a, 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 a seven points with the Dow Jones up 115. Apple is now down again. Google's up a penny, so not really up. Tesla is now down 21 cents again. Yeah, I think this rebalancing, well, all the arcs are up except for crisp. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking that we're still seeing this rebalancing, sh sifting through the market. It will be a, a very important thing. There's a ton of money in those seven companies. 
and a ton of money that has to be resorted. So that seems to be continuing. And then really quickly, let me move over to bonds again. Uh, bonds, okay. Uh, bonds are uh, continuing to be uh, down. The 10 year is down as it was and the two year and the two month are up. So that continues to be the case. Uh, all right, that's all I got for you right now. There will be a great video coming uh, to you later today. Larry, Larry, uh, Larry Goldberg and I put together, I think you're gonna love it. Probably come out at one o'clock Pacific. Um, and then uh, I'll probably do one more later today. Uh, maybe a summary of today's action, a little pre precursor before tomorrow's CPI, because guess what? That CPI is coming out tomorrow. And and it could it could be a, a crazy crazy day. So this is Randy Kirk. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit notify, and of course join Patreon if you'd like to see some of my other content that I'm put, putting up there. Um, hey, as usual, it has been fantastic talking to you.